Oh, I think I'm just I letting think. you be able to hear the song. Back in your computer screens for episode 14. Is that right? Wow. Okay. Rob on Combat, baby. What's up, guys? That's Josh and Mola. What's going on? We're back. And for a jam packed episode, we got to talk Robert Whitaker versus uh, Izzy, Izzy tomorrow. That's going to be a good one. The whole card's actually bought fire. We got Fox going to talk about Tyson Fury D- or Dylan White. Um, a whole lot more. But first. We got a word from our sponsor. Actually, you know what? First, we got merch. More merch. You want a t-shirt? Let me know. Let him know. We got it. We got it. Now we're from Bad time. Yeah, we both rock them right now. Let's go, baby. Shout out Charlie Covers. Best sponsor in the game. You know what You know what it is. Hit him up right now in his inbox with hashtag BTGAT. 30% off all pick packages for the entire month. Make some money with us. We got we loaded show. Oh baby, let's get it. Loaded. Let's get right into it, man. Robert Whitaker is Izzy. Oh, my oh. friend. Let's, do that. let's go, man. Let's just get right into the big one. Why not? We got wrestling to talk about too today, so let's just go. Let's just go. I'm ready. Let's just go. I'm in a I'm in a going kind of mood today, Josh. Okay, so Izzy, I'm I'm going. I'm gonna just give my prediction right off the hop. Let's I think it. Whitaker. You do by decision. We do. And we do. A lot of people are. I was telling. I was talking to guys at work, and they're they're like they do. Well, you got to beat the champ. You got to like knock champ out. You got to submit the champ. I'm like, well, no, you don't. Not anymore, man. <laughs> no, not don't. after Johnny Hendricks and GSP. No, you like, don't. No, you do not. There's judges for a reason. That's myth. That's what we call casuals around here. We love you, casuals, because you you fucking keep our sport going. Like the diehards, we don't keep the sport going. There's not enough of us. We need you, casuals. But shut up. <laughs> we've been talking to me and Josh and like MMA Junkie and ESPN you go home so do you think that in a sense like people are going to count Whitaker out too quickly like I think the guy's got oh, yeah. a legit chance to knock him the fuck out but I think he's going to 10-8 him in around well, probably the, three the, well, that's the difference between casuals and like the, the diehard fans because like you look at this fight from if like, if you have if you're not in MMA, you look at this fight after watching the last fight. You're like, no way, no way, that's over. He's, he's gonna outclass him. He's gonna do everything. But you know what? I don't think it's gonna go that way. I'll tell you why. Because Robert Whitaker has an MMA mind. He's one of the best fighter IQ guys in the business. And let's look at his last two performances. He's looked amazing everywhere. Grappling, striking. Look at how light on his feet he is. That was not the case. He was flat footed against Izzy. And I it didn't, didn't look like Robert Whitaker to me. I'm excited for this fight. I got Robert Whitaker by decision. Five rounds. It's going to be a long night for Izzy, I think. It's going to be a lot of grappling. We got a lot of mixing it up. I think he's going to strike with him, too, though. I don't think he's... like. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to back away from him. You look at the last fight... You look at his last couple of fights. He's been more of de- a defensive fighter. He's been like more of a distance fighter. Controlling, controlling it very well. And I think that's going to create a little bit of problems for Izzy. Because he's kind of a slow starter. And we've seen that with um, Paulo Costa. And we've seen that with Yoel Romero in the past, where, like, if you're technical with him, there's a window of opportunity there because he's not going to go for the kill right away, especially with a guy like Robert Whitaker, which will create opportunities to clinch. It will create opportunities to level change. It will, it will, it will maybe even put his jaw out there. But there's a lot of opportunities for Robert Whitaker to win this fight, and I got him by decision. What I think do you it's think, gonna, Josh? I, I got him by decision, too, but I think a lot of people are underestimating Robert Whitaker in this fight because. The man, yeah. Yeah. he was the champ. These they, guys, are, yeah, he lost to Izzy, but you gotta think like these guys are gonna fight three times. I guarantee it. It's, it's gotta happen. It's yeah. just one of those things. It's Australia. It's New Zealand. It's a battle. Like they're see the face off yesterday. Oh man, it's intense. Hey, I didn't even see the weigh-ins today. I bet you they were fire. I just, I think it's gonna be fine. I think it goes five rounds. I'm not overly expecting a knockout. Like I'm not expecting. To see somebody go out there and really just dominate the other, it's got it's more even than that. Mm-hmm. Like when I looked at the odds, it was five fifty for Whitaker, and oh, it's yeah. like, come on, man, that's for a knockout too. It's yeah. like 
two hundred or three hundred for bold. That's two thirty nine for him to win right now. Right. I'm bet ninety nine. It's five fifty for a knockout though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, if yeah. Izzy out? It's five fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up. Yeah, and that's that's kind of light to me. I thought that'd be a little higher. But I but you know. that just shows you how even this yeah. fight is. It's like I don't trust. That's like the bet odds guys saying like I don't trust it. We can't put no, five fifty right. down on you're right, it. You're right. I like it though. I, I took I took Whitaker. Uh, I took in a, in a parlay. I took Whitaker. I took Derek Lewis, and I took um. Oh, who else did I take? Whit- oh Brunson. I took Brunson. Lewis Brunson uh, Whitaker, and there's a lot of value there. Yeah, there is. It sounds like a lot of value. I think it was like. I can't tell you the exact odds, but it was like fifteen dollars for like one hundred eighty nine payo. I think I put like fifty bucks on after I seen that. I was yeah. like, "Yo, let's go, let's get All some right. money, let's go." But so, you, before we go to the next fight, because Derek Lewis and Ty Tuivasa needs to be talked about, oh, and I'm excited oh, for that yeah. fight. What what's going on with Joe Rogan, Josh? What the hell? I'll be. I'm probably gonna sound like an oldie here, but I actually did not do any research. Any I don't know <laughs> anything that's going on, so. Whatever you tell me here is going to be news to my ears. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, prepare yourself. For the last three weeks, Joe Rogan's been under fire. Neil Young, a bunch of other no-name artists, but Neil Young's definitely the biggest, has pulled their music from Spotify, okay, because of a guess that Joe Rogan... I'm, I'm not savvy to the whole story either. I just know the, the like, bare minimum. I didn't watch the podcast... But uh, I guess this guy came on Joe Rogan's thing and he was talking about vaccinations and he got into like that kind of territory. He was a doctor and he, he didn't agree with a lot of public. Anyway, they're shutting down Joe Rogan. I don't agree with it, man. I don't. Why are you doing that to Joe? You know, like Joe didn't say no. They're get shutting him down fully. Well, they're trying to. They're trying to. Like Spotify is not, but like the people is. You know, like CNN's got. He's got a lot of bad publicity on CNN these days. Oh, you can't believe anything that comes out of that yeah. fucking news. Yeah, you know? but it's everywhere, Josh. Like, they, like, there's, like, protesters. Like, Neil Young is a big one. They, he pulled all his music. And, like, you know, it, it, it's kind of a big thing. He's not doing the... He, and, people, and what's really bothering me, and this is the thing, that I, this is the reason I'm talking about it on the podcast, or otherwise I wouldn't have touched it. He's not doing the pay-per-view this weekend. Ooh. Yeah. I don't like that. I, if, you know, if it's for, like, your mental health, sure, I love that. You know, get, get right by, like, if it's for, like, this fucking bully tactic media firestorm, fuck that, Joe. Get back. But Joe's got you know? the money to just say, you know what, fuck y'all. Yeah, like, yeah. You're going to miss me oh, at yeah. one point. Yeah, I'm not yeah, coming yeah, yeah. back. And I, that's brutal. You know, that, that's how I hate that. That's horrible. I don't – us losing Joe Rogan as an MMA mind would be detrimental to the sport, in my opinion. I just hope you go on Meat Eater. I can watch him on there. He's funny yeah, on there. yeah. But still, man, like, imagine, the UFC just doesn't feel the same. Like, the broadcast doesn't feel as big without Joe a part of it. And this is a huge oh, fight. Joe should definitely be I on. I agree. I team. already think Bisbing's fucking in over his head. Like, Oh, yeah, he's in tonight. He's in tomorrow night like, for Joe. you got to think about this, though. But I like Bisbing. He's done good work. Oh, like, the guy thinks he's Tony Romo of the MMA, yeah, and I, I fucking yeah. hate it. I don't like his he interviews. sucks. I don't like his interviews, but I'll tell you right now, like, he's, he, I, I don't mind him on commentary. If he's, like, with, jo- with John Anik, like, a guy that can carry him, like, I like that. Like, I, I, I'm into that. Yeah, I agree. I, but maybe have DC do the interviews tomorrow. That's all I'm saying. I, I think <laughs> he's extremely smart as a, a commentator. I love DC as a commentator. Me too. He's a great commentator. John Anik. He, he can get biased at some points, but at the same time, he's great. Yeah. John Anik did a great job filling oh, in for Mark Go- Mike Goddard. What is it? Is it Mike or Oh, Mark? Go- Goldberg? Mike Goldberg? Is it Goldberg? I thought it was Goddard. Mike, that's a referee. Oh, yeah, it is a referee. Yeah, 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 Mike yeah, Goldberg yeah. was the old announcer. And yeah. I, was, I was about to touch on that. I used to... I kind of left a sour taste in my mouth when he came around, like, what, was it 2012? And they cut they cut Mike? They didn't cut him. Well, they he got uh, bought out by Bellator. Well, no, they didn't buy him out. They, 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 didn't, they didn't renew his contract. That was the thing. They, they didn't even send him an offer, Josh. Like, oh. they, like, they, they said, we have John Anik. We have, like, a... Well, they did have a deep team. I'll give him that. Yeah, and the UFC deserved a payout. Though. But that jo- guy was Joe and Mike, Joe man. and Mike was great, and they did, and like the company didn't like the direction that Joe and Mike were going. They didn't like the chemistry, so oh, they went with John Anik together. instead. And I, you know that left a bad taste in my mouth. But John Anik did a great job. We can't. I'm gonna I'm gonna that. stay right now. John Anik is one of the goats. Yeah, he is great. fantastic. He he really is. Like he like I I didn't think it would be the same, but it's better in my opinion. Yeah. I I never thought I'd say that. I do love Goldie. And I wish him nothing but the best. We is one of the best minds in the MMA history i love I'm but it's a new Bellator. but yeah it, but it's a new time you know and i, I think i think it was, we maybe 
change isn't what we always want, but sometimes it's what we need. And I, I kind of like it. The broadcast is, feels a little more fresh. John Anik is always a great mind for the sport. So, let's touch but, on yeah, the but, co-main. But for the, I'm pulling for you, Joe. Yeah, like, we're fuck, pulling for like, you, Shut Joe. up, guys. Leave him alone. Co-main. Two of Asa, Derek Lewis. This is... Yeah, I was kind of split down the middle when I was making my parlay this morning because I'm like, ooh, ooh, Derek and Lewis. It's near Pickums. It is, but I went Derek Lewis because of the size, and that's literally the only reason I can I could muster. Because like Ty to of us, like we touched on this last show, I thought he should have been a light heavyweight, and I still think that. He's. I looked at him at the way the face off yesterday. You, Josh, you can't tell me he's not undersized going into this matchup. You know, he's a yeah. lot undersized. He's. I, I understand the power. I understand he's got laying in his hands. He can knock out any heavyweight in the world. I get, I get it, I really do. But like, not just the size. Like, I'm talking mass. I'm talking height too. You know, like that matters. There's a lot that matters. And Derek Lewis is not a guy you want to give any inches to, especially in reach. He's got the reach. He's got the he's got the big size on him. He's probably gonna come in 20, 30 pounds heavier. Yeah. There, there's you know there's a lot riding for. Him. I I'm actually surprised the odds are this close, just because of all that. You know. But, you know, ties on a, a roll. You know, if he does land that strike, if they do get in the pocket and he can take one of these big haymakers from Derek, I don't think he can. But if he can, well, maybe he gets it. You know, maybe he gets the shot. Like, was it, or what was it? Uh, Derek, Derek, no, Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy wobbled him. Yeah. Stunned him. I thought it was over. And then two losses landed Boom. that massive right hand. That could happen. Now, I'm not saying it can't. But I don't like the odds. I'm going to tell you right now, there's too much riding against him, and I'm going with Derek for that reason. Derek Lewis, knockout. Easy. We're going to talk probably about the next fight, and then we'll probably pick the card because the title's on the line for this one. Derek, or was it Derek Brunson and um, uh, Jared Jer- Cannonier? Yeah, Jared Cannonier. So I got Cannonier by knockout in the second round. Yeah, I got Derek Brunson by decision. I think Cannonier can knock him out. He's got to get the job done. If he doesn't get the job well, that's, done, that's, I totally agree with what well, you that's his only That's his only way for victory, right? And I don't think Derek Brunson's got the goods to last or to knock him out after the first round either because of the size difference. I think I think second round he's got a shot, but you're getting into the third round. Oh, he's, got, he, he's, a, he's a gas tank liability, right? I, I think Derek Brunson puts it on him, though. I think he can get a takedown in the second and third round, no problem. He's proved that. You can fight through the guys and get get yeah. the land the takedown, win the round, and that's what I think is going to happen. So my you, opinion. So we both got kind of dis- different decisions coming. I, out, I, so. I do see why you went that way though, because Jared has hands of stone and he he is known to knock you out, but he's also a gas tank liability, and once he gets on his back, he's not the greatest. He needs kind of, especially with a world class wrestler like Derek Lu- or Derek Brunson on top of you, it's not an easy night. I agree with you. And you know what? He's probably going to come in a little heavier too. Derek Brunson's been a little beefy these days. He probably when he, when he fought um, I, I forget his last fight. I'm not even gonna lie, it's slipping my mind right now. But last fight he looked, he, I think he came in at like 200 pounds, 205 at least. You know, like he looked big fight night. Yeah, he was supposed to fight. Can- he was supposed to fight <coughs> Brunson at 270, but it got canceled. Okay. I'm trying to find his last one. Was in 22, 21. He was against Calvin Gatlin. Oh, Brunson? Decision. No, Jerry Cannonier. I was talking about Brunson. Brunson looked a little bit beefier last time. Brunson's last fight was... He's on a little bit Darren of a Till. Yeah, he's on a little bit of a roll. And Darren Till was a good one. That was a good... Kevin Holland. Yeah, you know, destroyed Kevin Holland. He's had three fights. He's won his last four. Three yeah. fights have been canceled. If he wins this fight, he's got to be... He's got to fight for a title, right? Holy like, fuck. He hasn't lost in a long time. Last fight he lost was to Israel Adesanya, and where is he? You know, Adesanya. See you, Ariel. Every time I see. fight is he? Derek Brunson. Oh, oh. I think it was like 2018, 2017. 2018, maybe? Yeah, it was 2018. That was his last loss. Holy crap. He's been on a tear lately, so. Both of them haven't lost since that last fight either. Yeah. Damn, eh? Who's it? Alex Pereira's coming up too, the guy that knocked out Izzy twice. Mm-hmm. I want to see that fight. That's a fight I want to see. Win or lose, that fight's always going to be there. That's like a Nate Diaz Connor to me, honestly. Like, this guy, you know, because if Izzy had a, a threat to take him down, I would say Israel's going to beat, beat the snot out of him, but he doesn't. He doesn't take guys down. So that's going to be basically a kickboxing match the same way he knocked out Izzy the first two times, mm-hmm. or last two times. So, like, 
that's a fight I want to see, you know? Like, Kenny doesn't really redeem himself. There's a lot of story there. He's already lost twice to the same guy. That you know, knocked out once, viciously. So, there's there's some history. There's a lot. Okay, so... We're there's a lot of fights to make a middleweight. Picks. You can give it to me. We're going to go from the bottom to the top. Prelims two or no? No, just, just, the, just the main card. Five, five, five fights? Four yeah, fights? five fights. So, Bobby Green versus Narset. Who could parse? I'm going to say that name. Yeah, I'm going to go Nasrat. Nasrat? Yeah. I'm probably going to have to agree with you on Bobby that. Bobby Green's a little over the hill at this point, eh? Yeah. No momentum behind him. Alexander Hernandez or Renato Moicano? I'm going to go Hernandez, but that's a, Moicano is, a good, is really good. Ah! Give me Moicano. No! Yeah, give me Moyacano. I like Renato. Give me it. Lock it in. Ro- Moyacano. That's where I'm going. It's a tough one, eh? <laughs> it's a really tough one. Might have to split you here. I'll go uh, Alexander Hernandez. I, was, I see why. Jared Cannonier, Derek Brunson. Give me Brunson. I'm going to get in here. Well, last two, uh, last three fights. Let's let's get picks. I uh, uh, like finish, finish results. Okay, Jaron Kieran, your second round knockout. Yeah, I'm gonna knockout. give me Brunson decision. First round. Derek Lewis to Avasa. Give me Lewis knockout. Give me Lewis knockout first round. I think it's it puts it on him. I'm going to Avasa. It's it's five rounds. I'm pretty sure. Is it? I thought it was three. Is it three? I, I'm pretty sure it's three, but I, I don't think know. The co-mains are five now. Are they? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I thought that was just a specialty thing. Unless it's a title fight. Oh no! I have to look at that. I'm thinking two of us in the third round. Okay. I'll look it up after. We'll look it up after. Okay. But okay. Izzy and Whitaker. Give me Whitaker decision. I'm New going, champ. I'm going Whitaker by knockout. All right. Okay. Let's what round do you think? Doesn't matter. But what? Whatever. I think he catches him in the second or third round. I've got... I'll be honest, okay? I might switch to decision because I see Izzy getting up. I think it's a 10-8 round. Because I think Izzy wins the first round 10-9. Whitaker either wins the second or third round 10-8 or 10-9. And if he wins round two, then it's a 10-8. And then round three is a 10-9 where Izzy tries to recompose. And Izzy wins four. And Whitaker wins five. You know what's crazy? I can't even watch it live. Because <laughs> my girlfriend and I are doing a Valentine's Day thing. So oh. I'm going to stay off social media for Saturday night. Right? While we're doing our movie thing. And then Sunday morning, I'm going to get into it. And we're going to watch the fight. The whole card. And then I'm going to get on social. Oh, yeah. Arrow Styles and I are doing a live on Sunday. If you guys are interested, pop on to either mine or his Instagram. We'll put arrows in the description. You already know mine. It's right there on the screen. Follow it if you don't already. We'll be live Sunday. We got an announcement. Hey, Josh. So all main events are Let's five see. rounds. And since it's a co-main event, it is five <coughs> rounds. <coughs> it's five rounds? Yeah, I'm taking two of us by knockout in probably the fourth fourth round i'm going i'm going Derek lewis still first round i think that one is quick nice but yeah no we have an announcement sunday i will be making it on on uh aero styles live because i'm going to be him are going to be chatting about a few things that we got working behind the scenes for you like always and what else do we got oh yeah we got tyson fury and dylan white before we got into mark minute I'm ready to mark out about the Royal Rumble. I got some things to talk about, and I'm not happy about it, Josh. Did you I hear? Did. I got it right. I called that. You did. You did. But like, I said, you you got it. Like, you watched the. You want? We'll get into it already. We'll get into it. But like, you 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 seen that before the match even started? How it was gonna end? And I was screaming at my TV because I was like, Josh. Ah! <laughs> yeah, you know. It happened. So Tyson Fury and Dylan Wade is official. It's going to happen at. Josh, can you get us a date, please? You're doing so much work today, man. I, got, I feel like I'm putting you through the, through the ringer. Young Jamie to the max. No, 
on the score right now. I'm running it. Damn. April 23rd. Not far away, yeah. folks. No, oh, that's going to be a great fight, I think. It's official. Josh, give me your thoughts. Are you disappointed? I think Dylan White, and I'm not disappointed. He has to. Yeah. If you don't, you got a huge problem on your hands that you don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Just get it over with. Do the work and don't underestimate Dylan White. Get past six rounds, and I think you ride the rest out, and you might be able to knock him out in the sixth or seventh round. I absolutely agree with you. You know what? A lot of people are disappointed they didn't get the Usyk fight done. I will. I, I I will admit I wanted to see. I want. I still want to see the Usyk fight. Can I say something though? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I didn't want it. You don't want the Usyk fight at all. One reason. Why? Usyk beat Joshua. Handedly too. Handedly, but he hasn't even considered anybody else. He wants straight for Fury. Well, no, he's he is booked with or uh, AJ. They're contractually obligated to fight. They will. Yeah, so that's happening. So but like, AJ would have had to step aside. The, the roadblock was AJ. I don't agree with that whole situation. <laughs> what I want to see yeah. is that rematch. Everybody fight their fight, and then we'll we'll let the cards play out as they should. And I the agree with The cards have to yeah, fall. Everyone's mad that we didn't get you sick and Tyson Fury right away. We're in such a rush culture. No. But you know, I will say this. Let I them just, do the work. It will it'll ma just make the fight bigger at that point. It, Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm no worries. I will say this. Tyson Fury has said time and time again in interviews he's got four, five fights left. Yeah, and those are big fights. Dylan and he said, no slouch. he said Dylan White, AJ, Juszczyk, and he he threw these two names on the table because he knew they were easy and he could just do it for money, was Francis, and he even said Stipe's name. So... Yeah. But look, those two could be gone in a yeah. second. Like, so it, be, the right he could only have three fights technically left. Or he could have those. The he could have all the fights, but like not like the last two. Like those last two are interchangeable. Like yeah. if, if a big name comes up, he'll fight the big name over them for the money, obviously. 100%. But yeah, there. I love it. I I'm not gonna lie. It's a good fight. I Dylan White's no slouch. I do I think. I just hope he doesn't ruin him. I no. I I do think Tyson Fury gets this done quickly. I know. I, just because of um, oh, who knocked him out? Oh, he's been knocked out in his last three, two fights. Dylan, Dylan White. Dylan White. Yeah, he he suffered a knockout. He came back, but he he still he's the chin's wobbly. The chin's a liability. I got Tyson Fury. He's too good. You can catch him. Too long. Too lanky. Too much power. Just too much power for Tyson Fury. I think he puts it right on him. After seeing what he did to Deontay White or Deontay Wilder, it's it's gonna be a long night for Dylan White, I think. Although Dylan White is a tough guy. He's a good boxer. He has power. He he can put your lights out, but come on. You know Deontay Wilder. Yeah, hundred percent. Colvin. Ah <coughs> uh, yeah, it was Pavekin. Pavekin yeah. put his lights out in the first round too, Josh. Yeah. That's what that's what kinda like I seen that because he was undefeated at that point, and everyone was clamoring for the him to fight either AJ or Fury, and I was behind that. But that was a big test for him, and he got knocked down the first round. And that, and I think either one, AJ, Fury, or Wilder, get him out of there early, in my opinion. Yeah, and all of his losses come in knockouts, so that's the shitty part. And, right. and even even if he he put a world class on Pavek in the second time and put him and put it right on him. And he and he got the loss back, but it doesn't matter. You fa you you already shown that if you get cracked, you're going down. And I'm sorry, but Pavekin is nowhere near the boxer that Fury is. Well, Zolt put it. He's an awkward guy. He's, if you're talking to Zolt, and who am I to disagree with Zolt Duran? Yeah. He's but like he Zolt called him an awkward guy. He's not a very great boxer. I can't stomach. I can't come to the terms to call him a not great boxer. But like I'm not also not going to disagree with. <laughs> A pro yeah. boxer at the same time, so like I, you know, he's too awkward for Dylan. I'm just gonna say that he's gonna put it on him. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's too lanky. He's, he's got the reach. Him a mess. Yeah, I he's think so. I think so. I think by the third round, Dylan's either gonna throw in the towel or he'll be sleeping. All right, mark your minute. Oh, it's time for the mark minute. It's a quick show today, but I'm cool with it. We like these quick shows sometimes. Let's talk about how shitty the Royal Rumble was, Josh. You know what? Like, I'm not mad that Brock Lesnar won. You could have done it a better way, though. Like, I mean, like. As soon 
as Roman Reigns interfered and won and or basically gave it to Bobby Lashley, I knew right then and there that Brock Lesnar was going to win the Royal Rumble. And it was just horribly, horribly obvious, terrible booking. We've been saying this on the show for like 10 episodes, Josh. They do these backdoor bookings and it puts them in such a shitty corner when it comes to the product because it suffers. Everybody suffers. They don't care because they got the Saudi money. They're going to keep, they don't do on pay-per-view no more. That's not the model. So it's like, why, why, why do you even try? <laughs> you know, like, why do I even try to watch these things sometimes? Because like, AEW is actually putting on shows for the people on the other channel. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the Royal Rumble was a horrible disaster in my opinion. You even got the last two horribly wrong. Like, you can't tell me Riddle shouldn't have been there. can't tell me, like, a plethora, plethora of other stars could have been there, you know? You put the same old guys in the same old spots, and I'm... It's just... It gets sickening after a while. The Women's Rumble, I will say, was booked tremendously well, okay? The Shane McMahon angle... Or the Shane McMahon drama, we'll get into it in a second. For the Royal Rumble, kind of shattered... Or kind of shadowed the whole show and put it sour taste in everybody's mouth but the women's rumble was very but was booked very well a lot of surprises a lot of swerves i've seen a, a ronda rosie coming back was a huge swerve i did not know i did not read the dirt sheets i know it was reported that she was going to be in the in, re, in the area it, maybe i could see her doing a small entry in the royal rumble but i did not think she was coming back like this after what she said about the fans a couple months ago you know she got a lot of heat on her i didn't think they'd accept her they did huge pop Wow, that was great. That, that's what Rumble should have been. That's what it should have been the next Rumble in the main event. That, they should have just put the girls on the main event. That's how it was going to be because that was a good fucking show. That was a good match. I was engaged. I could actually, I didn't walk out halfway through the Royal Rumble <laughs> for the Women's Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? Like, men's, I was getting sick. I, I was getting sick to my stomach. It was tough. <laughs> it was tough. It was like tough beef that was cooked way too long, bro. It's charred, man. <laughs> Ain't tender, you know. That that woman's Royal Rumble melted in your mouth. It was really easy to stomach, bro. It was like great. It was like old school wrestling almost, you know. Ivory came back. Like Lita was there, but then they had the new stars. Like Bianca Belair was highlighted tremendously well. Ruby Riot was highlighted tremendously well. Um, what's her girl? The girl with the short hair. I don't watch wrestling like I should. Yeah, I used to, but you know what I'm talking about. The 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 MMA girl. She was booked tremendously well. Rhea Ripley. She was booked tremendously well. Uh, Liv Morgan. Like there's a plethora of women stars that were just put Ray right over, and the and then they had the old girls come in. Like Beth Phoenix was there too, and I thought like, wow, this this was this is what a rumble is. Like this is that's what the men should have been. They should have been highlighting like younger guys coming up, like the, like that. Like it's just. How do you put on a show? How do you put on a rumble like that, and then you get you get that, you know, like ten minutes later, less than ten minutes after that match ended, you put that out to us. It's like some some booking decision went wrong putting that guy putting that match on last. The whole booking of that whole show was shabby except for the women's rumble. Every every match was terrible. That was the only good match. Terrible. F. <laughs> Maybe a D because the women's match was good. The women's match was bad, bad F, but the women's match was good, so D maybe. Still, ew. You know, AEW, you got like, I've seen uh, John Moxley and CM Punk do a great tag team match with, uh, with um, the FTR. You know, that was amazing. Like, that was for the people. That was great booking. We did not see... The ending was swerved, like, three times. That That's what a match should be, you know? The, the other show is put on great masterpieces, performances. They got great stars. And they actually know how to book the stars. And that's the fucking difference, man. <laughs> like, WWE was all about the bookings back in the day. and now <sighs> The storylines aren't there. Nobody's it's, interested. How am I supposed to believe half the shit you put on the TV? You know what? You know what I like about AEW? They got guys like Eddie Kingston that'll say, like, fuck CM Punk. I don't like him. Fuck. No, not. Or sorry, he likes CM Punk. It's Daniel Bryan he came after. He's like, Bryan Danielson, I don't like him. He's a mouthy piece of shit. He, like, he's, he's going off on him. I love that kind of book and that's realism. It's what wrestling needs. He's always in character. You never. You know what? You can never find an Eddie Kingston interview where he's not in ca- character. He's played that, like, I hate the world attitude, bad mouth motherfucker like that. You can never find a normal Eddie Kingston interview with like all these other wrestlers, and that's a lost art. But 
these are these are the type of differences that make a show like these small little things like this like a wrestler should do they don't do on the other program and i'm not like these good yeah and you would think the program that's putting on these great shows on tnt would be the the biggest game in town it's not the other the other guys are the biggest game in town and they're the ones putting on these fucking clown fest circus acts you know like from the 90s almost like this is like eight nineties wrestling with the cl- Doink the Clown basically at WWE right now. This is like another Doink the Clown era, and I'm not having it. You know, you let Jeff go because you thought he was on drugs, but he had a concussion. You too stupid to understand. Like here comes the CM Punk angle again. You will give him another CPAC, bro. Like, ugh. <laughs> bro. Like who you got working doctors? These witch doctors, man. Anyway, that's my that's my rant for the Mark minute. That's all I wanted to talk about. The Royal Rumble's terrible. Wrestling is dying. AEW is keeping it on life support, but like that's not sustainable. The future's not looking good, Josh. It's grim out there, man. We need good stars. Darby Allen. These are these are wrestlers that are keeping this ship alive. John Moxley. We need he a was, Sean Shelby. John Moxley was on the other show. And they didn't know what to do with him. How do you not know what to do with John Moxley? <laughs> we need a Sean Shelby in there and make fights. Sean Shelby, holy fuck. We thought it was, we thought WWE was bad now. Hire Sean Shelby. We're all fucked. They can't even run UFC properly, man. Like, I'm still waiting for Connor and Nate. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh man. Man. Anyway. Connor's gotta wait for some steroids to get out of his body. Too. Holy smokes. That was a good episode, I think. Guys, thanks for coming out. Episode 14 is in the books. Big announcement Sunday. Tune in to my IG or Aerostyle's IG. We'll put that in the description. And check out YouTube this weekend for episode 13 dropping on YouTube. Yes, sir. Episode 13 this weekend at some point. Happy Valentine's Day to you and yours. I hope you all a great weekend. Goodbye. Happy Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Who do you got? Quick. We got time. Who do you got? Bengals. Oh, you going with this? You Simpsons motherfucker. No, you know what? No. Matty Stafford's going to break this curse. Matty Stafford is not going to let this happen. He's not going to let Matt Groening rule the world anymore. He's going to put an end to this. He's our superhero. He's our Superman. Saving I us will from say the this. Tonight. I will say this. Bro. It was the Chargers. It's not the Rams in the Simpsons episode. Okay. Okay. It's the Chargers. People. But L.A. Yeah, it is L.A. LA. It's, it's L.A. It's L.A., but... The L.A. Chargers are not in there. It's the L.A. Rams. Right, be clear. And on Rams, baby. I will say the this. Rams. If the Bengals win, Joe Mixon is the MVP. If the Rams win this football game, you don't, I'll tell you, you right don't, now, you don't I have give, money on this. You don't, think, they go, you don't think they give it to Joey B? Sorry, you don't mean to cut you off? No, no Joey B. Okay. It's going to be a running game. Oh, what you got money on, bro? I got money on if L.A. wins this football game, Vaughn Miller will win MVP. Wow, that's a bold pick. That's a bull. Vaughn Miller will 100% win MVP if the Rams win. With Donald uh, or or Aaron Donald Donald right beside him? Aaron Donald will be great, but Vaughn Miller's going to have at least two and a half sacks. That's a fucking crazy. That's a a Simpsons pick right there. That a a Simpsons pick? He's he's calling a shot. The last time Vaughn Miller was in a fucking postseason, he had a 39% win rate against his old lineman. He walked away with... I think it's seven or eight sacks over the postseason, and he won Super Bowl MVP with two and a half sacks. You know so what? You know I what? think history might repeat itself. Okay. And okay, okay, that calling your shot. I like it. I like that. Give me it. I'm, but you know what? I'm calling my shot too. Give me L.A. Rams. Give me Matty Stafford. It's his time. He can't win his first Super Bowl after all this time and not get MVP. Give me Matty Stafford to hoist both trophies on Sunday night. Guys, thanks for coming out. Hey, Aaron Rodgers calling his shot on the golf course. You see that, Josh? Number four, congratulations, big guy. You deserve it. The best player in the NFL for the second year in the world. His fourth overall. Let's go. Aaron Rodgers, baby. Thanks for coming out, guys. We love you. Big announcement on Sunday.